Kennedy Space Center, Florida, November 14th, 1969. Less than four months after the success of Apollo 11, NASA launches Apollo 12, its second manned mission to the moon. On this mission, one of the key objectives was to learn more about what's below the surface of the moon. One of the big lunar mysteries that the Apollo astronauts were hoping to at least answer in part was what is inside the moon. We're limited in how much we can really look at the moon and look into the moon to understand its interior from the Earth. The astronauts on Apollo 12 left seismometers, just like we use on Earth to detect earthquakes on Earth. They wanted to see if the moon had these quaking type behaviors called moonquakes and they want to see how did the moon behave, what kind of resonances does it have? And those are related to its properties, its inner structure, its core. And these are things that you can learn about only from placing these seismometers on the moon's surface. To understand what's going on inside the moon, the Apollo astronauts and the scientists at NASA came up with a really interesting experiment, which was to crash things into the moon and measure their impact with seismometers. The idea being, if you smash a known mass into the lunar surface, that allows you to understand exactly the seismic data that you're seeing. After the astronauts have safely left the moon's surface, they intentionally sent their ascent stage module, which they no longer needed, crashing into the moon. When Apollo 12 sent its lunar module ascent stage hurtling into the moon, it hit. and the scientists on Earth saw the seismic data. But it didn't do what anyone was expecting. The signal seemed to be going back and forth inside the moon, almost like it was a bell that was ringing. And it went on for an hour, and no one has been able to understand why. The moon rang like a bell? The discovery came as a shock, and it opened the door to new, thought-provoking possibilities. The oscillations lasted for a very long time, much longer than we expected. And that's surprising fundamentally because we're just really used to the way the Earth vibrates. And the moon just behaves differently, and it let us know that the structure of the moon is very different than the structure of the Earth. Some people thought that might mean the moon is hollow. The moon basically resonated. And to put it the way NASA put it, it rang like a bell, which doesn't really make any sense if the moon is solid. Now, this can only happen if there were vast, empty spaces inside the moon, where these sound waves would be bouncing around for hours and hours afterwards. It was not a result they expected. So it's possible what we're looking at here is that there are interior portions of the moon which are hollowed out. Did the Apollo 12 mission actually reveal that the moon is hollow? While that may sound like a far-fetched notion, many researchers believe that the answer is yes. And for further evidence, they point to a classified experiment that was conducted on the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. On Apollo 17, there was a NASA experiment called Chapel Bell, which was classified. If you think about the name Chapel Bell, it implies something to do with sound waves and the ringing of a bell. But nobody knows what Chapel Bell is. It's 50 years later, the test itself is still classified. There's a lot of secrecy that seems unnecessary, especially 50 years later. It doesn't make any sense. The only reason it makes sense for the Chapel Bell experiment, the separate experiment, to be classified is if the results were something extraordinary, something unexpected, and something that implied that the moon was far, far different than NASA had been telling us. What was the Chapel Bell experiment? And what were its results? Could it have provided more evidence to suggest that the moon is hollow? And if so, has NASA deliberately withheld this information for 50 years? 